Hello viewers, this is Showman from Oil and Gas Field Quality Control. Today I will restart uh, to complete a series in the topic of cathodic protection. So the single video I put for discussing the basics of cathodic protections, uh, it gave me a lot of positive comments which inspired me to create this series. Uh, here we will go a little bit ba basics and also a little bit physics of cathodic protection. Hope you will like it also. At the end uh, of the series, I will also discuss if you want to take corrosion engineering as your career and cathodic protection, you want to study more in college and university, I will give you some links from where you can explore more to choose your right um, courses or uh, any kind of uh, long education, university education from that uh, video. So let us start. Today, the second video of this series, first one is already published long days before. So the topic is cathodic protection and electrochemical corrosion. Cathodic protection physics and basics we will be discussing in this video. Electrochemical corrosion, this is the deeper physics lying behind cathodic protection. Electrochemical corrosion occurs when two dissimilar metals are present in an electrolyte medium. Seawater is an efficient electrolyte. Different parts of the same metal made dissimilar by treatment or a metal and its oxides are sufficiently dissimilar to create such corrosion. What is electrochemical corrosion? Electrochemical corrosion is a process in which current flows between the cathodic and anodic areas on metallic surfaces resulting in corrosion. There are always multiple corrosion elements in this process. A host metal or metals exposed in an electrolyte. An electrolyte is a medium that can conduct electricity by movement of ions. For example, salt water, soil or the pore water in concrete. One basic information, pure water without any contamination or without any chemicals present on this is a very bad conductor of electricity. So it must be salt water or mixed with some chemicals to make this electrochemical corrosion happen. A metallic path between the exposed metal surface, examples of this include a buried steel pipeline accidentally connected to a copper earthing system in a classical galvanic couple the steel being anodic to the copper. A buried or immersed steel pipeline or structure on which anodic and cathodic areas naturally establish due to the variance in either the steel composition or metallurgy or within the electrolyte. Corrosion initiates on the metal or electrolyte interface and on these anodic areas low voltage direct current DC flows off the anodic metal into the electrolyte. So anodes get corroded. Charged ions are released into the electrolyte and electrons are released into the metal. By convention DC flow is opposite to electron flow. The simple electrochemical circuit is within the electrolyte that is in the soil, the sea or river water or the pore water within the concrete I mentioned before. DC flows off the corroding anodic areas. This must complete the electrical circuit. So it flows in the electrolyte and discharges on the non-corroding cathodic areas. So cathode is non-corroding area. DC flows in the metallic circuit electronically by electron movement. In the electrolyte, it is via ionic movement termed ionic conduction. The cathodic areas receiving current flow from the electrolyte do not corrode. The electrochemist rather than the engineer will describe precisely the same process as anodic area losing the ions to the electrolyte that is metal loss or you can say corrosion and electrons to the metal electron flow the process is the same it just that by convention the direction of electrode and ion flow are opposite the electron flow is opposite to the ion flow 
In electrochemical corrosion, the magnitude of the current flow is directly proportional to the rate of corrosion. Approximately 10 kg of steel is consumed by 1 ampere DC passing off steel surface for one year. So this is a rough statistics for you. Here in the picture, you can see the electrochemical corrosion where you can see the diagram. Electrons is flowing from zinc to iron. Effect of more electropositive material towards the rusting of iron. The galvanization of iron with a layer of zinc. So this is a basic principle of galvanizing of iron. Cathodic protection is highly effective method of preventing corrosion and is used in multiple industries and environments. Its history in corrosion science really begins with Sir Humphrey Davy. First discovered the cathodic protection principles and applied them to electrochemical corrosion. Davy's experiments led to a better understanding of electrochemical corrosion and the first use of cathodic protection in 1824. When Davis successfully protected a British Navy ship's copper sheeting from corrosion in seawater by using iron anodes. In this article, we examine the process of electrochemical corrosion as an introduction to cathodic protection. Depending on whether it is described by an electrochemist or an engineer, cathodic protection might be described as replacing the lost electrons from an external source, thus changing an anodic area into a cathodic area and preventing corrosion. So this will leave your pipe or the area to be protected uncorroded and where there will be a sacrificial anode which will lose its life to protect the carrier pipe or sheep or whatever. Providing cathodic protection current to all areas of the metallic surface within the electrolyte sufficient to make all the surfaces cathodic. Where is cathodic protection used? We heard that cathodic protection is not only used for the pipeline. So let us see where it is being used successfully over years. Cathodic protection is used around the world to protect against corrosion, especially in aggressive environments such as soils, water and chloride contaminated concrete. Applications include buried and immersed storage tanks, external surfaces of the bases of above ground storage tanks, with corrosive foundations, inside crude oil storage tanks with highly saline water bottoms, inside storage tanks for seawater or raw water, ships, hulls, external and internally in seawater, field ballast tanks and cooling water systems, offshore oil rigs, platforms and subsea completions, offshore wind foundation and tidal generators, pipelines buried and immersed, both onshore and offshore. By the way, this is the basic subject of my channel. Pipelines, buried or immersed, oil casings, flood defenses and log gates, reinforcement in concrete. So, our basic physics for cathodic protection, I thought I explained well. It is basically electrochemical corrosion uh, where anode is getting sacrificial. It gives its life to protect the tank or pipeline or offshore oil leaks or whatever. So this is the basic principle of electrochemical corrosion. If you like the way of my teaching, please don't forget to share and subscribe my channel and please, please don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for today. Signing off, Showman.